He walked north onto Windmere, then Charlton and Kitchener Road, past the Grand Queenslanders' nostalgic Italian villas. The scent of wisteria blossoms were on the cooling air and now came the breath of the sea. But when he got to Eagle Farm Station, he had missed the train. There was another in 10 minutes. There was a bus further down the hill across a little park. A bus that didn't have to go back through the city but went directly north to Sandgate against the flow of the traffic. He checked the timetable on his phone. If he ran, he might get it. On his phone came a message from Molly. Hope everything's okay. We'll be there in 15 minutes. He swore. It was dark when he entered the park. He crossed a small slat wood bridge across a creek. A thick gallery of pines ran along the creek, blackening the water. On the bridge, he stopped running. He had three minutes. He would be on time. When he reached the middle of the bridge, he heard a woman scream. He froze, stared hard into the dark of the woods to the west. There was no light in there. He spoke to the dark. Hello. No answer. Hello, are you all right? Still no answer. That same breeze that brought the scent of wisteria and the breath of the ocean was a wind now, and it moved in the trees, rustling the leaves and bending the trunks. He squinted into the dark that gave nothing. Had he really heard the scream? Perhaps it was not so much of a scream as he first thought. And further away, perhaps it had not sounded so... How did it sound? He could not think of a word. But no, it was probably lovers. That was it, lovers kidding each other, playing a game. They were in the dark there giggling, and surely the sound had come from much further away. It was so hard to pick the direction of a sound, and somehow the dark made it harder, and the wind. In fact, perhaps after all, it had only been someone's television. Hello? Nothing. He had one minute to get to the bus stop. The bus was late. He stood at the stop under an amber light, staring back towards the invisible park. The bus arrived. He boarded and stared out the window. He looked in the direction of the park but could only dimly see through the reflection of his own face that lit by the ambient light inside the bus. The trees were behind his eyes. What would he have found back there had he walked into the dark? The bus shifted gears. Nothing, he thought. Surely nothing. A little girl came out of her house to stand under the amber light. She stared up at him, then down at the ground. Was she looking for frogs? It was summer and native frogs still came to these northern, northeastern suburbs and children often tried to catch them. She followed something in the direction of the park. No, he thought, go back to your house. He knocked on the glass to get her attention. The bus moved onto the road and all he could see was the reflection of his face. Dim outlines of suburban houses rushing across it. Thank you very much, cheers.